Over the past few years, the world has witnessed a sudden and unprecedented reduction in its bee population. Here in Taiwan, the eastern honeybee saw its numbers dwindle to near extinction two years ago due to an outbreak of the viral Chinese sackbrood disease. Now, one beekeeper in New Taipei's Pingxi district has devoted himself to rehabilitating this fragile species using apiculture techniques passed down in Pingxi for generations. Today, he is the proud father of 600,000 eastern honeybees. He's also passing on his knowledge to senior citizens, helping them collect honey and make their lives a little sweeter. Our Sunday special report. Even in December, the mountains of New Taipei's Pingxi are still lush and green. On this day, beekeeper Yang Chongfeng is headed to his secret base. He's going there to take care of a precious cache hidden in the undergrowth of the forest. The golden treasure is right inside this hole covered with wire mesh. Pingxi locals have a long tradition of using holes in the ground as a way to attract bee swarms. Yang Chongfeng has added his signature to the old practice by covering the entrance with a wire net. I use the wiring because of the hornets. If a large hornet squeezes into the hive and attacks the bees, within two days the whole swarm will relocate somewhere else. His bee colony is made up of eastern honeybees, the only bee species endemic to Taiwan. I'll take this swarm back to the farm in two or three months, then I'll tidy up the hole. Two weeks to a month later, a new swarm will have moved in. Yang is well versed in the knowledge passed down through generations of Pingxi beekeepers. The bee swarms he brought home in the past have grown and prospered. 600,000 bees now thrive in the woodlands around his house. These native bees are very sensitive. If their nest is too humid or dirty, or if there are parasites, the bees will abscond and go somewhere else. Yang Chongfeng's passion for his bees is apparent. Their behavior still does not fail to enthrall him. The queen bee is busy preparing to lay another brood of eggs. She is constantly tended to by worker bees who feed her. This new queen bee is breeding very well. There are 15,000 bees, more or less. The mountains of Pingxi are in bloom all four seasons, giving bees abundant sources of nectar. Humans rarely disturb them here, making this the ideal spot for eastern honeybees to flourish. The native bees don't need humans to feed them, unlike western honeybees, which need to be fed sugar syrup. They know how much honey they need to produce for the winter. They are very easy to keep. You just need to provide them with a clean space and let nature run its course. Eastern honeybees are easy to keep, but they were in danger of disappearing two years ago due to an outbreak of Chinese sackbrood disease. When the disease broke out two years ago, it wiped out nearly the entire population. Our survey showed that around 95% of the bees in the Keelung area were extinct. Yang's bees were not spared from the calamity. The bee brood in the nest was all rotted. They would develop until the fifth day and then die. I didn't use any medication. There was no medication available. I had to leave them to fight the infection on their own. Yang, with his 10 years of beekeeping experience, made the call to wait it out. I waited for two years. My 60 beehives went down to just one. I bred another queen bee and now I have over 30 hives. Yang has since recovered from the catastrophe. He has moved on to a bigger project. He has teamed up with his neighbor Lin Kezhu to support senior citizens in the pursuit of beekeeping. With their encouragement, 84-year-old Chen Shuitian is rearing bees once again. <laughs> Yang and his neighbor hope that beekeeping can give a new purpose to the seniors' daily lives. One goal is we are trying to encourage more seniors to keep bees. Say that someone has one hive. When it's time to harvest the honey and throughout the whole process of bee raising, we come by and see how he's doing and help look after his bees. 
今麦你若算是若有成功，是会看胖的。If you do a good job raising them, you can see all the bees going in and out. It's very interesting. The tradition of beekeeping runs deep in Pingxi. In the past, poor transport and supply shortages meant that every household raised its own bees and used honey instead of sugar. Many of these elderly mountain villagers look forward to harvest day. Today, Chen's hive is ready. He will only be collecting one third of the honey. The rest is left in the hive for the bees to eat in the winter. Honey is their food. We're kind of stealing it in a way. They don't make it for us to eat. They make it to feed themselves. Big honey harvests aren't the goal of teaching seniors about beekeeping. For Yang and Lin, the point is to make the seniors' lives a little sweeter. These native bees are part of nature. There's something to be cherished. The bees have let us slowly nurse them back to recovery. Recovery is slow, and beekeepers wait patiently for their honey harvest. Eastern honeybees have once again become a part of daily life in Pingxi. As the locals' experience shows, a slower pace of life might just be one of nature's most rewarding gifts.